think the picture's better on YouTube, but the volume is worse. Really? On YouTube? Huh. Turn up your volumes? <laughs> uh, yeah, it should be good on YouTube, usually. is. Uh, yeah, we're actually trying, and our webmaster, Alex, uh, we're streaming on Anthony's Facebook page, so we'll we'll, right. we'll, oh, we'll have a look mention. at it. Yeah, I forgot to mention the, the website focusonthekingdom.org is being updated. Mm -hmm. oh. So some of the links may not work currently, but it's right. in process. Mm. And it's looking looking very good thanks to our webmaster in Nicaragua. Yeah, so, okay, so today... Uh, we have visitors from Switzerland and Germany, mm -hmm. so very privileged. We Thank you for. We did a sermon today. We forgot to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> In English, <laughs> please. <laughs> chief, chief pastor here. <laughs> so thanks for coming. Thank I know it's both. a long trip, Thank expensive you trips, us. but mm. yes. Thank you. Okay, so yes, Anthony will be uh, uh, should be back before we end, hopefully. Is there any problem with the links? With That's streaming. Um, yeah, it yeah, it yeah, it is streaming. Okay. But and just check. Stopping and starting is what they're saying. Okay. Stopping and stopping and starting. On the focus site? Mm -hmm. Or? Yes. Yeah, it's, could, it's could be the. Yeah, if you have any issues, just go to the uh, YouTube one. Hopefully that's better. But uh, we'll. We'll try and get it fixed post production because I can't right now. So, all right. So today we're going to talk about uh, divine passive, uh, which is just a fancy term, fancy theological term for uh, Jesus' way of speaking about God. And uh, there's a link there. Is there a link on the PowerPoint? I think mm -hmm. if you're on the focus site, you can see the PowerPoints. If you're on YouTube, you cannot see the PowerPoint, so, but uh, I'll upload the recording on our YouTube channel later. But there's a link there to the Human Jesus website uh, that uh, talks about and has some link, links. And also the RF blog spot. I forgot to put it there, if you can find it. I put up most of the notes here. And again, I can send all this stuff afterwards. So, divine passive, uh, has anyone heard of that term? Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. Can someone give me a, their definition of what a divine passive might be? <coughs> or online, if you want to join in. It's a way of referring to God without saying God. So, like, I might say, your sins are forgiven. Right. And I mean by God, but mm -hmm. I don't say those words, which... Right. So, that uh, next slide there, so what it, it's, it's, it's simply a way of uh, implying the words by God without the words being in the text, in the scripture. So, for example, mm -hmm. Sarah mentioned your sins, uh, we'll, we'll go through examples, obviously, but uh, your sins are forgiven you, Jesus says. Your sins have been forgiven, depending on the translation too, and you'll help me out with that because translations vary, and sometimes they don't bring out the divine passive. But usually when Jesus says, your sins have been forgiven you, and then you fill in the gap by God. Now Jesus did that for a couple of reasons which we'll go through, which have to do with, his, with the fact that he was a Jew, <laughs> but uh, we'll see that as we go. The term is also called a theological passive, to use a, a longer theological word. And I got, have a couple of points there. So it's typically distinctive Jewish terms, as, uh, talking about the activity of God the Father. So in the phrase, your sins have been forgiven you, uh, without even mentioning God, people know who is forgiving your sins. It's not Jesus, by the way. It's ultimately God. Uh, it identifies the subject, the author, the, the actual doer in the, in the sentence forgiving sins. It actually tells you who is forgiving the sins. Uh, it, it's used... Uh, Wait a minute. 
Did you say it, it does tell you who is forgiving, or just says you you are forgiven? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are. In the divine passive, you, you don't. It's implied. Right. That it's God. That it's exactly. God. It, it, I'm online. It's got, has like, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Is mm -hmm. what yep. Jesus said. Exactly. You, and then who by exactly God. Exactly is doing the comforting. I guess is right. what you're talking about. Right. right? Kind of thing you're talking yeah. About. Anytime you can add the words by God, it's they a will divine be comforted pass. by God. Right. We know what it means, but it doesn't say those two words. But but right. it obviously and, means. And that. we'll go through more of those examples. That that's one of them we'll talk yeah, about. That's a good one. Uh, it's also used as a summary of Jesus' whole public ministry, which simply means that Jesus, again and again, is implying the action of God, the Father. So, in almost all of his statements, and we'll see how, how many times this, this appears in the scriptures. And, and interestingly, like I said, this also has to do with the fact that Jesus was a Jew, because it's also a way to to avoid the divine name of Yahweh or Jehovah, however you want to spell it, by the way, we're not dogmatic on uh, pronunciations or spellings in this group, so knock yourself out. Uh, so Jehovah, Yahweh, uh, God. So, so the stats are interesting, as I said, um, it's used more than a hundred times by Jesus, this this way of speaking about God. So in the Gospel of Mark, it appears almost 20 times. In Luke, it appears more than 30 times. Matthew, more than 40. And in John, it only appears twice, <clears throat> which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And I have some, uh, if you want to do some more work on this, some good books there. Martin, Approaches to New Testament Exegesis. Jeremiah's is really the standard work on Divine Passive. Or Hedemias, New Testament theology, and Bailey, Jesus through Middle Eastern eyes. So let's go to the scriptures to have a look at some examples. So if someone can go to Mark 4. So one person go to Mark 4, please. Another person go to Mark 13. And someone else, well actually, I should... Uh, Barbara, can you go to Mark 4, please? Uh, Michelle, can you go to Mark 13, please? And we'll start in Mark. So Mark 4, let's see, where can we start in Mark 4? We'll start in, uh, let's see. So we're looking at Mark. Yeah, yeah but to get a bit of a context. Uh, 10. So go from uh, Mark 10 to 12. Later, when Jesus was alone with the twelve disciples and with the others who were gathered around, they asked him, What do your stories mean? He replied, You are permitted to understand the secret about the kingdom of God, but I am using these stories to conceal everything about it from outsiders, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. They see what I do, but they don't perceive its meaning. They hear my words but they don't understand, so they will not turn from their sins and be forgiven. Right. Can you read the verse 11 again, please? He replied, you are permitted to understand the secret about the kingdom of God. All right, right there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, a, it's sort of, it, that's the New Living Translation you heard. Uh, another translation says, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. So there's a divine passive in there. Can you pick it out where it is? To you has been given yeah. by, God. By, God. by God. So that, that's the divine passive, uh, the secret of the kingdom of God. And then in verse 12, can you read that from the NLT? I think it doesn't. <clears throat> so that the scriptures might be fulfilled they see what I do, but they don't perceive its meaning. They hear my words, but they don't understand. So they will not turn from their sins and be forgiven. By God. <laughs> so you add the by God uh, mm -hmm. phrases. So mm -hmm. there's two examples there of Jesus talking about God. And, and remember, most of his listeners are Jews like himself. So they get it. It's very simple. That's why there's a verse in Matthew, I forgot where, where 
people were rejoicing mm -hmm. and thanking God for giving such authority to human beings. Uh, so they, they well know that Jesus is not God, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. He's always talking about the God, the one God. Uh, go down there, same chapter, Barbara, please, to read from verses 21 to 24. A lamp on a stand. Then Jesus asked them, <coughs> Would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed to shut out the light? Sorry, uh, to tell verse 25. Okay. 21 to 25. Of course not. A lamp is placed <coughs> on a stand where its light will shine. Everything that is now hidden or secret, secret will eventually be brought to light. Anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. And be sure to pay attention to what you hear. The more you do this, the more you will understand, and even more besides. To those who are open to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But to those who are not listening, even what they have, will be taken away from them. By God. By God. Mm -hmm. uh, you also add in verse 24, I don't think that one would help, but another translation of verse 24, it, would be, it will be measured to you by God, and still more will be added to you by God is the implication. So there's actually three just mm -hmm. there, those two verses, mm -hmm. uh, implying God. So If we go back to verse 11... Just make the point that Jesus says the kingdom of God there. So it's not that he avoids saying God. Because mm -hmm. um, some people might take this too far. You know? Right, right. Like, yeah. It's uh, not that obviously, he wouldn't say God. Obviously, yeah. Jesus probably said in his, he, in his native tongue, Adonai Elohim. Mm -hmm. He probably said that. Right. I doubt he said the name, by the way. I don't think he, as a Jew, would say, however they said, Yahweh over you. No, he probably said in his native tongue, Adonai, Elohim. Right. In the Greek, he said Theos, mm -hmm. and that, that's about it. So, yeah, it's not that he's always avoiding the word God in itself. Yeah, thanks for picking that up. I'm not, I don't want to sound like, but obviously, yeah, that's a good pick up there because he obviously says kingdom of God. Now, we know that in Matthew, uh, the writer of Matthew, Matthew, uh, you know, he uses kingdom of heaven uh, as a way to avoid mm -hmm. the word God. So the writer there is more dogmatic, if you will, more of a dogmatic Jew, but... But he uses kingdom of God as well. Right, but, but there are references to yeah. kingdom of God. We have expressions like that in English. We'll say, heaven knows... And we really mean God knows, but we, you know, it's a way of speaking. Or we'll say, thank goodness. Well, we really mean thank God, <laughs> but it's, right, it's and, just a way of speaking. I mean, it's not. Yeah, and, and when I. Uh, here, there, but, yeah. and when but I, they don't say the, the name God be, because they don't want to take his name in vain. Because that's why we always said thank goodness. Right. He, to, to say thank God. Right. He's taken the Lord's name in vain. Yeah. Is what I was taught as mm -hmm. a child, so. Is that what they think, or why, why don't they say? Okay, well, I just you, wonder. I don't, I never well you have two things. When it comes to the Jews, they take the prohibition. When Jesus, uh, when, Jesus when God said, don't take the Lord's name in vain, mm -hmm. that's in Torah, right? Mm -hmm. So they took it literally. They said, oh, that means don't even pronounce the name, don't even. And don't write it down, because they don't write it down. Well, they do write it's it down, G four letters. Oh, that's right. Oh, right, right. Yeah. The, the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to, two things. You have the name, the four letters, Yahweh, or yeah. the... Mm -hmm. And then you have the word God. So the, some Jews are dogmatic about both things. Mm -hmm. So even in English. So an English-speaking Jew would, like you said, even the word God. Now, in English, it's interesting because they, they got a bit of a Jewish influence there. Because uh, until I married into this family, I was brought up with, oh, Jesus, or, oh, Christ, you know? Or you say, oh, my God. And then I found out that this, in, in sections of, of especially south, uh, the south of this country, the Bible Belt, that's like profane. You know, you can't say, oh, my God. You can't say, oh, Jesus, because that's taking the Lord's name in vain. 
I didn't know that growing up. So English speakers sort of took on a, a bit of the Jewish thing there. But uh, yeah, so uh, uh, you got Mark 13? Uh, let's go to Mark 13. Yeah, I understand what verse you mean. Yep, uh, I'll let you, I'm trying to get the, go to 9, from verse 9 to okay. 13, please. Okay. <coughs> but be on your guard, for they will deliver you to the courts, and you will be flogged in the synagogues, and you will stand before the governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them. The gospel must first be preached to all the nations. When they arrest you and hand you over, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but it is the Holy Spirit. How far did you say that? Thirteen. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. All right, so did you pick out, yeah, so you picked out the last one. Where was the other one? There's another well, one I in there. I wonder about verse 10, and I wondered that as soon as I get over here. The gospel must first be preached to all nations by God. No, no. Well, That's how, how do you know when to add it and when not to? Then? It's actually in 11, in verse 11. Well, I have um, a question about verse 10. Yeah. But, so you're just going to pop that question. in there. How do you know when to pop it in there? Is there some, he, or, well, this is. Greek, the grammatical usage of the word to tell you? No. No, sometimes. Context, yeah, okay. some, that's why we're reading the context because sometimes the context, for example, in verse 11, but say whatever is given you, well, who's giving whatever you're speaking? Ultimately, it's God in that hour. And then usually the saved ones or the forgiven ones, only God can save, only God yeah. can forgive. Yeah, if it's something so, that only... God does. Right. It, 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 it's pretty clear in the context where... And the Holy Spirit is God. Yes. Right. It's representing we, God. So. <laughs> yeah. There's a trinity in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, any comments online or is it not working at all? Uh, the stream? Sorry about uh, that, let's folks. Let's see. Verse 25 also will be given. Quote, in quotes, will be given. In, is it verse 25? Yeah, yeah that, that was in back in Mark 4. Mark 4? I think. Or and the stars will be right. from heaven and the powers of heaven shape. Must be in, in chapter uh, universe. Yeah, in chapter four, I'm sorry, chapter four. Whoever has whoever yeah. has to him shall more be given, and whoever mm -hmm. does not have even what he has shall be yeah, taken that's, away from him. Yeah, we had that. Right. Yeah. Right. Good. Oh, I thought they said we missed that one. Um, I don't know, maybe we <coughs> Yeah, we had the streaming is not Right. Yeah. So we have Mark four. 11 and 12, Mark 4, 24 and 25. Mm -hmm. And then we just read Mark 13, verses 11 and 13, if you're taking. Sorry about the streaming, but the slides should be. Well, we're back in Mark there. 4. It's interesting that in both the verses 24 and 25, we have the Shema. Uh, here? Mm -hmm. Shema? Listen. Yeah. And, and it's emphasized. I mean, it's it's... One of the, it's, it's, it's the key. Take mm -hmm. care what you listen to. Yeah, it's a command word. Mark 12 mm -hmm. also. 12 from <coughs> mm -hmm. Mark 12 from 9, Jesus quotes it. The mm -hmm. foremost. Mm -hmm. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you shall love the Lord. I mean, yeah. so he kind of adds to the creed, doesn't he? He's... Uh, Jesus? Jesus? In Mark, then. Mm -hmm. Well, that's in Deuteronomy 6, uh, 4 to 6. So it's all. Actually, they, mm -hmm. the Shema proper was uh, yeah, Deuteronomy 4 and Le uh, a section in Leviticus. I forgot that traditionally they mixed to recite the, sh the whole of the Shema, as they call it. Uh, Ephraim, can, do you want to read some? Uh, go to Luke 11. I'll look. Do you want to, and Luke 13, so if I am Luke 11, and we'll go to, uh, just give you the context, Luke 11, <clears throat> let's see, start from verse 47 to 51, please. I have a web translation. Maybe it's a bit different. I don't know. What translation? Web translation. Web. It's the only one I could get. Oh, the free, yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it should be, okay. we'll see. 47 to 51? Yes, sir. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets and your fathers killed them. So you testify and consent to the works of your fathers, for they killed them and you built their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute, <coughs> that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who per perished between the altar and the sanctuary, Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. Right, so mm. can you pick out the, the <clears throat> divine passives there? It shall be charged against this generation. Right. By, by God. Right. Mm -hmm. So both it's times, 50 good. and 51. Your translation is almost the same. Yeah, okay. it's good. Good translation. It's good. Good. Mm. The American state. <coughs> okay. So charge against this generation. And then in 51 required of this generation by none other than God. So yeah, it's it's a good uh, point Michelle makes. Like, how do we know? Like, are we just making this stuff up? Uh, well, no, usually it, it, it is only an action by the author, the, the uh, author of all things. That's God. Uh, Luke 13. Actually, it's um, yeah. it's also said in verse 49 that God is saying this. So it's okay. not even uh, hidden here. Right. That's God, true. Wisdom of God said. So mm -hmm. all what comes after that um, is said by God and yeah. done by God. Okay. That's a good point. Yeah. So is the wisdom of God a person then? <laughs> mm -hmm. So we have another person. Right. Another no, you know. Sophia. <laughs> yeah. She's a, she's a woman. Right. It's, it's <laughs> she. So, yeah. 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 Apparently we have a she in the Trinity as well. Of course. Uh, 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 <laughs> it does, yeah. yeah. Randy um, says, good point. I'm not sure about which thing. But um, he says, by Jesus' frequent use of the divine passive, the people knew that Jesus was not referring to himself as God. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, that's just to go back on, on the first example, your sins have been forgiven you. Uh, there's a bit of, well, there's always a debate mm -hmm. in theological school. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so, did Jesus forgive sins? Now, there are examples, I forgot to uh, log them down, I think twice, maybe thrice, uh, Jesus says explicitly, I have forgiven your sins mm -hmm. in Matthew. But usually he uses the divine passive in relation to healings and, and saying, uh, declaring that your sins have been forgiven you. Now, the one he does use in Matthew where he does say, I have forgiven your sins, he goes on to say, I think immediately, mm -hmm. because God has given the Son of Man authority to do this. Mm -hmm. So even though... It's a sort of rare instance where uh, the author of salvation and forgiveness is, is someone else than God the Father. In the context of it, Jesus, and that's what it's always left out of these Trinity conversations. Jesus is God conversations, the context, it's always left out. Jesus clearly says, because I have authority... God has given the Son of Man, and He uses the title Son of Man, which is an important title, as we know. He is the human being, the representative human being. And that's that, Mark 2.10. You want to read that? that? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on Well, actually, sorry, can you read sins? the context? Oh, okay, the whole thing. Yeah, Mark 2. Okay, because, yep. yeah, they're upset because they think He's yeah. blaspheming. Re read the context. From 8, please. From Mark 2, 8? 8, okay. Okay, so he's he's healed. Oh, he hasn't healed him yet, but they're no, having no, this no. conversation. Immediately, Jesus, aware in his spirit that they were reasoning that way among, within themselves, so they were <coughs> reasoning that he was blaspheming, he says, Why are you reasoning about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Actually, that's a divine person. True. Or to say, get up and pick up your pallet and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority yeah, on earth to forgive sins. That's not the one I was referring to. In Matthew. Oh. Well, Luke 520. In Matthew, he, he doesn't use the divine passive in reference to forgiveness.
forgiving. This, that's obviously a divine pass. Uh, but still, he, he says what he says there, so. And there may, maybe someone can. Uh, just before we, are we still in Luke? I think, uh, 15, just to finish um, the Luke gospel. 20, he allows the <coughs> disciples to forgive anyone's sins. Right, yes. right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, he gives, he gives authority. authority. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we can forgive sins. Uh, by the way, the, the priests in the temple forgave sins. So it's a priestly function. So what does that make, but isn't make it us? is God forgiving the sin and just the people? Or... Is it odd? Jesus is, saying, is it God? God. Jesus is saying that your sins are forgiven, that you will have power to forgive sins, but isn't that just calling on God's power? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That God he, does the forgiving mm -hmm. Ultimately, the it all goes back. He gives back. authority yeah. to other people <coughs> to, yeah. to, do, to tell yeah. them their sins are forgiven, mm -hmm. to actually do the forgiving of the sins. Right. It's like when he sends out the the seventy or the seventy two, depending on the manuscripts. Uh, it's all delegation, right? It's hierarchy. It's the God and then his son and then the rest. Uh, just to finish on I think it's uh, it's coming to the point to give honor to God. Jesus gives honor to God in everything he does, so right. shall we? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but in the context of this though, it's simply saying, I'm not the author of uh, forgiveness and salvation and judgment, by the way. Mm -hmm. Even though I, have, I will be given those. It, it, so it goes beyond sort of the honor. It's just, just a simple statement of fact that Jesus is the human being. And he says, look, my God, our God sent me. And so it's, yeah. Uh, let, let's finish uh, Luke 13. Uh, uh, let's see, where were we? Can you go down to uh, let's see, to get the context? Twenty-eight to thirty, please. <coughs> okay, I hear the NISB word. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth that when when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God by yourselves being cast out. And they will come from east and west and from north and south and will recline in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first and some are first who will be last. All right. So the passive there is all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves cast out by God. Uh, jump down there to... Alec to let's see let's go down same chapter 34 to 35 please O Jerusalem Jerusalem <coughs> the city that kills the prophet and stone those those sent to her how often I wanted to gather your children together just as the hen gathers the brood under the under her wings and you would not have it behold your house is left to you desolate, and I say to you, you shall not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Did you pick it out there, that last verse? Your house will be left to you desolate by God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, by the way, Jesus there uses uh, what's called Yahweh texts applied to himself blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord he's the lord there in the old test that's an old testament text for yahweh uh, so the prophet comes in the name of yahweh and so on but jesus here appropriates takes on himself uh borrows that yahweh text and says that's applying to me he does this with the famous malachi one uh, is it Malachi about the the oh uh, the baptizer John the baptizer uh, when he says I'm preparing the way for the Lord remember yes well that's Yahweh in the Old Testament I think that's Malachi two uh, you know mm -hmm. blessed is he who prepares the way for the Lord that's Yahweh that's Adonai <laughs> but there the baptizer John says it's the messiah so does that mean the messiah is yahweh well you make up your mind about that 
that that's why this there's a this mess we're in right with with who is jesus because it's true jesus takes on all the things about yahweh but that's why i'm showing you this because this is a something that jesus himself uses time and again a hundred plus times so why is he doing that if he himself is is yahweh and then uh, we'll look at a couple more in matthew and then uh time permitting this is all i'm setting you up by the way i'm just being mm -hmm. honest here i'm setting you up to a, a broader point i want to make here uh, of something that the biblical unitarian community we represent are still sort of divided on but mm. i just want to throw this out first lay the ground work are you going to cover luke 5 24 <clears throat> You, you can if you want. Well, because we were talking about this earlier. Um, it's when he, Jesus goes to the paralytic and he tells him, um, you know, friend, your sins are forgiven you. Mm -hmm. The scribes and Pharisees begin to reason, saying, who is this man who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Right. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, aware of their reasonings, answered and said to them, why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins have been forgiven you? Or to say, get up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, mm -hmm. he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up and pick up your stretcher and go home. And, um, That's the same story they were all struck in mm -hmm. Sarah read in Mark 2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same one. Yeah. They glorified, yeah. And they glorified God. Right. Mm -hmm. right. They didn't necessarily go. Now, the, yeah. on, on, online, when I looked up this, they said yes, because he's mm -hmm. the second part of the trinity because he's god <laughs> incarnate so yeah he has authority to forgive sins because he's god incarnate on earth right this malarco just sure over here look it. again but that's not what this says they're glorifying <laughs> no, god not glorifying the, jesus as god the temple priest by the way the high priest in his uniform you know that torah under the law of moses the priest uh wore a specific type of uniform mm -hmm. what we call uniform today and did you know that on his uh i forgot the headgear what it's called mm -hmm. but on that headgear the the priest had the divine name did you know this mm -hmm. he had the name which meant he was yahweh the priest mm -hmm. this is in the old testament so mm -hmm. yeah it's it's just a um a, a failure to research i guess or, or look at the broader con it, again it's not an english book we're dealing with this not an english book there's not an english culture it's not a spanish culture that's but, why the matthew version is really good matthew 9 8 of that same story about the paralytic mm -hmm. when the crowd saw this they were awestruck and glorified well, god word. who had given such authority to men yeah. So the crowds get it right. By the they way, the yeah. Wrong. By the way, the crowds usually get it right, and the guess who gets it wrong? The mm. teachers. Yeah. Or well, that's, that's why they use that example online, where it was talking about Jesus forgiving sins. Mm -hmm. When I googled that, that's why they use that example because they were able to easy, more easily, make Jesus being God. Right. Oh, if, yes. if you don't use the Matthew but if you version of Matthew one, it's <laughs> yeah. like no man who gave it to man, a man, Jesus, yeah. man. Uh, yeah, the, the crowd knew when when uh, Jesus asked the apostles, who do the crowd say I am? The crowd, not the teachers of the law. Well, you remember the response? Was any of those responses, oh, they think you're God? No. Matthew 16. Yeah, they, they, no one said. He's asking about the crowds. So the crowds get it, but the teachers who are supposed to be teachers don't get it. Mm. Let's go to one last one before I set you, I give you the setup. <laughs> Matthew 5. In Matthew 5, in chapters 5 to 7, by the way, the famous Sermon on the Mount, which is the law of Jesus. That's our Torah. This is the, the Torah of the Christian, by the way, chapters 5 to chapter 7. Um, let's see. Uh, Michelle, can you read the first 10 verses there in Matthew 5, please? They call it the Beatitudes. Beatitudes. <laughs> which means blessings. Mm -hmm. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And after <coughs> he sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's good. Um, yeah, so note the heaven, right? What I said about Matthew is in heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, I got I here verse... The kingdom of God, though. Right. Mm -hmm. I got verse 4, will be comforted. Right? Uh, verse 6, they will be satisfied. I, I got verse 7, they will be shown mercy. Mm -hmm. And I got verse 9, they will be called by God, children of God. Sort of a double repetition there. Uh, if you go down, uh, Michelle, to that same chapter, there's one more that's sort of hidden. Go down to 27 to 30, verses 27 to 30. You have heard it was said, you shall not commit adultery. <coughs> but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out and throw it from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Mm -hmm. If your right hand that makes you stumble, cut it off and throw it from you, for it's better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Right, so the one that's, it's verse 29. Uh, can you read that verse again? If your right, if eye, your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out and throw mm -hmm. it from you. For it's better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. By God. By God. So that, that's mm -hmm. the one there. Uh, let's go to 25. Uh, uh, Barbara, please. Chapter 25. So this is uh, the famous sheep and the goat leading into the sheep and the goats so starting verse 29 and yeah from from verse 29 barbara please through what i'll let you know okay. <laughs> to those who use well what they are given even more will be given and they will have an abundance but from those who are unfaithful even what little they have will be taken away now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Sorry, I, I forgot. So the previous verse will be taken away mm -hmm. by who? Mm -hmm. By, by God. God. Mm -hmm. uh, go down to verses 34 and onwards, please. Same chapter. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation by God. of the world. So right there, it's hidden. Mm -hmm. uh, and then go down to 41 forward, please. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. By God. So that that's in so that's chapter twenty five twenty nine, thirty four, and forty one. Uh, it helps if in your Bible because most of us now use this sort of stuff. But it, if you got a Bible, it's nice to color that in and just take note of the of the passives there. Any comments or? Um, any we've got. Um... <coughs> uh, the TN, milk, no sugar, no sign, said the gospel we will be preached equals a human passive instead of divine passive. A human. <laughs> right. Because oh, uh, right. it will be preached yep. by yeah, us, right? So good one. So oh, very good. So it's human, a human passive. passive there. <laughs> yeah. um, Matthew 9, 8 indicates the power to forgive sins could be given to men. 
think what we just read mm -hmm. several mm -hmm. verses there it says, mm -hmm. yep. gave me authority sin. And let's see, Paul in Romania says, I believe we can, we can forgive the sins committed against us, but not the ones committed against God or other people. Yeah, well. Because we do have, we forgive people who yeah. sin against us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so there is a forgiveness there. That's this might be a bit off topic. Forgiven forgiveness. <clears throat> this might be a, a bit off topic, but it's my belief that um, th there's a oh goodness in Luke. Uh, I think Luke 17, uh, when Jesus talks about, he says, if a brother or sister um, does something against you, and they come and repent. And, and ask forgiveness you got to forgive and then the apostles say well what if you know they basically come again and again and Jesus says look if they come and ask for forgiveness what is it 70 times or whatever times seven times 70 seven times yeah. 70 yeah. you have to forgive them there's a there's a uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for uh, it's not a well, uh, unconditional. unconditional. Mm -hmm. So it's conditional. In that in that teaching, and I think it's Luke 17, if someone may correct me, Jesus makes it a condition of Christians, right? So it's between Christians that in order to forgive, the person the fellow Christian has to ask for forgiveness. Right? So it's not unconditional. Same with God Himself. God's forgiveness is not unconditional. You know, I, I, I squirm every time I hear evangelists on TV or preachers say, God loves you unconditionally, period. And so people go, oh, cool, I'll go and do right, all kinds of stuff because God loves me unconditionally. This is what led probably to the once saved, always saved mess. But there are, there are conditions to salvation. There are conditions to forgiveness. Now that's my belief, I'll say it as a personal belief because many of us don't agree on, on that there's this thing that people just, well, you're a Christian, you should forgive, what are you talking about? Well, that's not really what Jesus teaches, I think. I know so that's a bit off topic, but... Now, in terms of hate, in terms of harboring, right, you did me wrong and you didn't ask for forgiveness, then I'm gonna, right, uh, be resentful. That's wrong. I'm not saying, no, we, we have to forgive in our hearts, if you will. But uh, we must seek repentance in order to be forgiven. I mean, it's just, yes, you were going to say, Sam? Yes, I, Paul's point was that he says we can forgive the sins committed against us, but not the sins committed against God or other people. Think, that we have an ability to forgive sins. Right, we have authority to forgive sins against mm -hmm. us, but I don't... Against second person, third person? Right, basically is the question. I think apostolic authority, maybe, maybe the apostles had Broader. authority to, yes, to Broader. forgive sins yeah. against God. Yeah, but when it comes to, so someone uh, offended Ephraim, mm -hmm. so can I forgive? I mean, I'm <laughs> not, that, that, that's the fallacy of... of uh, Catholicism, by the way, right? That the one person can forgive. No, I don't. I don't think that's how it works. Right. I don't think it works with second, third, or fourth persons. Well, when it says what we just read in Matthew five, blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you, you <coughs> falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is in heaven. So, those people who have insulted and done all kinds mm -hmm. of evil against you aren't coming to you and saying, oh, please forgive me. Mm. He's not saying when, when they come to you and ask you to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. He's just saying your reward is going to be great. Right. Mm -hmm. and so there, there is some kind of forgiveness you have to give to these people, or at least overlooking what all they're But that text is talking about if you put up with that, if you don't retaliate against that, your, your reward is great. Right. Well, if you're not retaliating, <coughs> that's some form of forgiving them, isn't it? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's true. It's a yeah. form of forgiveness. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. they're not coming back to you and asking you to forgive them after through all this. Yeah. Right. No, no we're I not see. advocating revenge or no, no, we're, yeah. taking yeah. it out on no, people. No. <laughs> no, that's why I said you, 
harboring uh, those offenses in, in your heart are obviously, they will not get us into the kingdom. No, we, I don't know how to put it, but I'm not saying don't forgive. What I'm simply saying is that the, the Christian who has offended you has a responsibility to ask for forgiveness. Uh, if that doesn't happen, it doesn't mean, well, I'm going to hate this person or this person is... Actually, we have to actually love our enemies. Mm -hmm. So, no, but it's just, uh, I think, a, the biblical precedence is that as Christians, if, we, if I do Ephraim wrong, and Ephraim says to me, you offended me or whatever, but I don't say, well, forgive me, Ephraim. I think that's wrong, <laughs> right? You, you have to come and, and make up, as it were, with the mm -hmm. fellow. Anyway, we're going, getting up enough topic. Luke 17, again. be careful. Is that if it? God sins against you, rebuke yeah. him. Mm -hmm. Rebuke him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What for? If to, he sins against you, yes. If right. You what, why do we, are we supposed to rebuke each other? Just to, you know, and if he have problems? If he repents. Right. Yeah. It's if, so you can yeah. have some repentance go, going on. Thank, thanks for pointing that out because this thing about don't judge, right? Don't, don't, well, we're supposed to rebuke each other. The judgment in this verse is about the judgment of the kingdom. I can judge you or say if, you, if you're making it into the kingdom. Exactly. Right, salvation so God's, issue. God's doing. Huh? Right. right. No, but that's exactly right. So you yeah. rebuke your fellow brother or sister in order that there is some reconciliation through repentance. We must always try and do that. Anyway, we're getting a bit off topic. Uh, let's go. So this was a, a whole, this was all a setup, Ephraim. All a setup because we're going to Colossians. Well, it's a teaching moment. Colos <laughs> Colossians 1. Colossians, you said? Colossians 1, the infamous or famous Colossian hymn, or however you want to call it. Uh, let's see. Alec. You got a nice easy version there. Can you start from verse 15? Colossians 1, 15 to 20, please. <clears throat> and he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or domin dominions, or rulers or authorities, all things have been created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself might come to have first place in everything. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him, and through him to reconcile all things to himself having made peace through the blood of his cross through him I say whether things on earth or things in heaven okay so this is a very well known especially among theological circles passage it's it's almost like a John 1 1 passage mm -hmm. but uh, the reason we did the divine passive is there are a couple of divine passives here can you pick them out it's in the first couple of verses of this section. Now, this is a very important because, actually, let, let me lay it out this way. Traditionally, this has been one of the proof texts, quote unquote, of uh, Jesus is God, right? And the, the version, what version again, Alec, did you read? Translation? NASB. NASB. Uh, can you read verse? Was it 16 again? The Steve, last part of 16? Last part. Mm. All things? All things have been created by him. By him. Okay, that's wrong. Now I have First an NASB also. And yeah. It has through him. Yes. Yeah. Or in him. The word is dia in, in Greek. It's okay. D-I-A. Dia. Yeah. 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 I think um, this is the updated version that we have. Mine is updated? Or is it? I think ours. Yeah, okay. 
yours and mine. And yeah, so. See the older one. Yeah. Throw your phone out. <laughs> so that's interesting. So they're getting it right. They, they update I, I think it does make a lot of difference. Uh, right. Yeah, it does oh, yeah. make a lot of difference for, yeah. for people. Yeah, so. But unless that's the update. Maybe ours is older. So. Maybe they corrected it wrongly. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know which one. Actually, can you read. I've had a Bible a while. Can you read the first part of verse 16 in that one? The first part? For by him all okay, things. Okay, right there, by him. So yeah, it looks like that. it looks that. like that one is translating the Greek. The Greek is dia, which is in or through is 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 more appropriate appropriate translation. N.T. Wright, uh, Mu, I think Douglas Mu and other uh, uh, scholars make this simple. It's a, it's just a point of the language that it should be in or through, not by. Now, or with him in mind. Right. Well, yeah, fancy way. Mm -hmm. So, did you pick out the the passives there? There are a couple of yeah, divine all passives. Were created. Right. Mm -hmm. All things were created. So that's verse sixteen. For in him, not by him. With him in mind. See, by him already, mm -hmm. as Tom, as I saw him squirm, by him already gets you in trouble, right? Get gets us to, well, he's the creator. It's by mm -hmm. him, yes. which actually could also mean in him. But anyway, for in him, all things were created. So, all right, let me say this. Traditionally, this passage is a favorite, right? It's a go-to. It's like John 1.1. 1, 1. There you go. Look, it says by him. Jesus is the creator. Um, okay, that's a problem. We don't agree with that. But the other problem is the way traditional... Biblical Unitarians have read this. They they have looked at this and said, well, we don't agree with that by him. He's not the creator. So we'll say, oh, this is talking about the new creation. The new creation. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got a dog in our midst. Says, <laughs> the attention oh, has... Smelling seen. our dogs that is on Tom's feet. There's I'm some sure. food there. <laughs> so that's also not quite correct this whole passage is not about the new creation only now when you get down to verses 17 i would say onward he is before so this is the son jesus he's before all things in him all things hold together he is the head of the body and so on now that sounds i think it's right when uh commentaries say that oh that's the church the body of Christ, right? It's in, in a way, it's the new creation. And then it talks about thrones and, uh, let's see, uh, 19. Uh, sorry, uh, where are we here? Where are the thrones? 16. Uh, it's see, visible right. and it's invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or okay. authorities. No, that's not. Okay. Yeah. All right, so... So why is this important? Because so traditionally, they have seen this as, oh, this is part of this new creation. So verse 16 is part of, let's say, verse 18, the church. So this has nothing to do with Genesis creation. This is actually the new creation, which includes, obviously, the body of Christ, verse 18. But that's not quite right. Why? Because of the divine passage. So what creation would this possibly be alluding to? If we're right, if Michelle is right, that the divine passive, the first instance, is in verse 16, for in him all things were created by God, then you have to be, uh, uh, be aware that this is in reference to the Genesis creation. Usually, like I said, this is where I, I break with a lot of biblical Unitarians. They would not, agree, a lot of us would not agree with that. Because then they, why? Because then they say, well, that's a problem. How, how can you say then that it's a Genesis creation? So is that, that mean Jesus was there? And that's when your paraphrase with him in mind is important. Because now... Mm -hmm. What's happening here is that with all things in mind uh, were created, God did this for the Son. 
That's basically what it's saying. Things are in heaven, on earth, visible, invisible. So all things God had in mind, all creation he had in mind to give to the one man, to the one human being who first messed it up, the first Adam. And he's called uh, the son of God, by the way, in Luke. Adam is the son of God as well. So he had this in view for his son, God. But then, uh, now it's applied to the, to the Messiah. The second divine passive is all things have been created. So all those things, Genesis creations, they stand created. They remain created. And then verse 17, he is before all things. Not in terms of time. Obviously, he wasn't there physically, literally. Or else we wouldn't be biblically in terms. But again, this is where Michelle's with him in, in mind comes into view. And then note that it's always through, it's always in. So it's always in mind. It's always with, in the mind of, uh, of God. He had his son. First Adam messed it up. And then the second Adam succeeded. Uh, am I making sense here? Yeah? Some... I have a note in here, and I don't know where I've got it. That the phrase where it says at the end of sixteen, where it says all things have been created through him and for him, I have those are future things. Hmm. So I think we just you just said that they were, and I I don't know who told me that. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I think that's part of the divine passive of the first part of this verse. Hmm. All things have been created. Well, they were right. If we're talking about Genesis, which is, we picked up the all things were created by God. Maybe the for him, meaning all the things for him in the future, like all the things that, that are the coming, coming, the kingdom and all that, mm -hmm. will be for Jesus mm -hmm. as far as, mm. um, I don't know, I don't know why. Okay. I have to ask Anthony because most of my notes come from him, but I don't know. Sure. maybe not. Uh, actually, in connection to that, just, just hold it right there. Let's go to Hebrews 1. Because uh, you just reminded me. Here's a good parallel to the in him. Uh, these, how the sun is the centerpiece of everything, really, from the Genesis. Again, we have to include Genesis in Colossians 1 in this section. We, we have to. Not just because of the divine passive, but the fact that everything was created for the sun. First for son of God, Adam, who messed it up, and then Jesus. But in connection to uh, Michelle's uh, point here about the future, look at Hebrews 1. Uh, this is the, uh, I'll read from the, uh, let's see, ESV, I think, captures it better. So Hebrews 1, long ago, at many times, in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us, he should be in his son, or through his son. Some translations have by there. Whom he, that is God, appointed heir of all things. See the tapanta, that's the tapanta word that comes up in Paul's letters. All things, tapanta. All things, you have to include Genesis. So, biblical Unitarians through the ages, in trying to get away from the orthodox position, I think are not doing a service here to the language being used. Through whom, so it does use, through whom also he created the world. So, was it because he was there, Jesus, or the Son, or whatever? No, because with him in mind, as, as uh, Michelle says, and actually, that's N.T. Wright, uh, with him in mind. He, now the Son, verse 3, is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his hypostasis, by, by the way, that's the only use of that hypostasis word, nature. And he, the Son, upholds the universe, the whole, everything, the worlds, some translation, by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, that's actually Colossians 1.20, Alex is read, through the blood. 
He sat down at the right hand of majesty and so on. And then he becomes superior. So that's a good parallel to what I'm saying here. Everything, all the ages, there's an age war here, I think, eons. Um, yeah, so everything with him in mind, everything. So going back to Colossians 1, the word created is important there, the divine passive, because it connects to this view that all things are in the sun, through the sun, with him in mind, not that he was the by, the, the actual creator of all things. Verse 2, Which is, so you've got the, he was um, the son whom he appointed heir of all things through whom, mm -hmm. and that right there, that's that with him in mind again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With him in mind, also, he made the world, and the world is the ages. Mm -hmm. And note, so. note that same verse that in the past, God did not speak through the son. Right? right in these last days he he spoke through the sun so the sun couldn't have been there according to hebrews uh let's quickly go to can you read those quotes for me i have a couple of quotes here uh it, with this thought of in mind with with christ with the messiah in mind for i have for the sake of messiah uh this uh, were created divine passive uh revelation 4 11 and you got the verses there Revelation 4, 11 says God created and things were created. That's a good parallel and other verses there. But can you read the hey one there, please, Sarah? Two passive forms of the verb to create in verse 16. Obviously allude to the Genesis creation in verse 15. Jewish tradition had previously said that God created the universe through his wisdom, Proverbs 8, or word. Uh, that's Philo. God created the world for the sun, indicative of a divine eschatological purpose. Rabbi Yochanan, 3rd century CE, said the world was created for the sake of the Messiah. This is in rabbinic literature, folks, all over the place. Again, don't believe the preacher, check it out for yourselves. Um, so here's the purpose of the ages, the Messiah, in rabbinic thought, in rabbinic literature, because it's in scripture, in their Tanakh, in their Torah. So you have the purpose of the ages, more verses here. We talked about Hebrews 1, 2, in, in him, through him. John 1, 10, he was in the world. Yes, you could? Yes, the Oh, battery is dead? No battery on that one. Did it? Okay, I'll, just hit the little I'll try and finish soon. Thank you. Um, John 1 10, he was in the world, that's the Son. The world came into existence through the Son. Colossians 2 3, in Christ, someone brought up Ephraim, a wisdom. Uh, I think the wisdom of God. Uh, Colossians 2 3, in Christ are stored all the treasures of wisdom. The Messiah is the agent and vehicle. We got 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Where are you getting these verses? Because I don't have these. Is this on a paper you passed out? Uh, no, I'm just rattling them oh, out. Okay, but you said we. I thought I missed something. No, sorry. Uh, no, I got John 1, 10. They're on the screen. They're not on the screen. Not on your screen. Okay. okay. They're not on the live feed. I, I, I'm not on the... That's not the... Oh, because you that's posted. That's not YouTube. No, but I had to refresh. So you're on there now. Oh, and there's okay. no scriptures on here. Okay. So, uh, John 1, 10, Colossians 2, 3, if, if the streaming's not working, let us know. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, it's a famous uh, Unitarian. There, there's one God, the Father, from whom all things, that is, all, were created, and we exist through the Son. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, and so on. Is the streaming not working? Are people? Yeah, streaming. Sure. Okay. Well, strange that it's now on my not on the screen. It was. Any comments, or as we head towards the exit here? Does so, through whom imply any casual agency? Causal. 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 I'm as a cause. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that. Fix the glasses here. All right. Causal agency. Yeah, he's he's the I cause. I didn't he, wonder what that meant. Yeah. Yeah. Causal agency. Also. Yeah. It's a big word there. Causal agent. Yep, he's the agent, he's the vehicle, he's the cause of all of all things.
Can you read that divine? Uh, now I want to just quickly, as we end here, talk about the divine name issue. <laughs> because unfortunately in our community, Biblical U, is, it, it, it has become uh, a sort of an itch that you can never scratch. It's always... Um, so I mentioned uh, at the first that Jesus as a Jew probably also used the divine passive a lot because he's a Jew and uh, he probably most likely did not use the name, the four letters, not Adonai Elohim. He obviously used those. Can you read that quote, please? I got a quote here from uh, Too Many Trinities, question mark. Well, she's looking for that. Can I give you one comment? Sure. Um, uh, C. Guideman says, this is the first time this is making sense for me. Mm, oh, good. thank because you. Yes, Jesus is the second Adam. Was that? The oh, great. Great. I'm looking to see yeah, I think he's coming not to learned that, oh. that the word by there yeah. means in, through, because of, yeah. because of with mm. him in mind, mm. all those things. I mean, that's a big one when you are switching from mm -hmm. the belief of Jesus pre-existing. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I grew up thinking Jesus, sure. that that right there, by him all things were created. End of story. Close the book. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And that you have to learn that, that that's not what that means. And we're not all Greek scholars. We read the, right. the words that we have written in front of us. Right. And you have and, and taught and taught yeah. it by people who should know better, right? And from who are scholars who are biased. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you have all those other verses, like that's why I rattled them out: John one ten, Hebrews one two, uh, First Corinthians eight six, Second Corinthians five seven. They're all through verses. They're all in verses in Jesus through Jesus. He's the means. He's the vehicle. He's the causal uh, action. Uh, the divine name. So just quickly. Can you read that, please? The practice of piety <coughs> toward the divine name, precisely by its avoidance, continues in the New Testament, even if contemporary Christians might often miss this. Jesus, for instance, shows reverence for the divine name in his rejection of oaths, in his distinctive use of Amen, Amen, and in his employment of the divine passive, um, as in, blessed are they, forgive and you will be forgiven. By God. Now, if this is true, now I'm just throwing this out here. If this is true, if this statement is true, if the divine passive is part of the Jewish prohibition, let's call it, to mm -hmm. say, pronounce the name, etc., uh, this would be an interesting thing because you, but you, didn't Jesus say, I am? You, you've heard that one, right? He said, I am. Now, so there's something wrong here because if Jesus actually is going around not just pronouncing the name but claiming it for himself saying I am the <laughs> right Houston we have a problem that's an American saying Houston we have a problem for our German friends but the other interesting thing is that God's actual name is not I am uh, so if you go to Exodus 314 it's the famous one right I will be what I will be. That's what Yahweh said. And that's the four letters. I will be what I will be. In Greek, it's translated, the, the Hebrew is translated, ego imi o on. And our Greek scholar just walked in and he can correct my Greek. Ego imi o on. Tell them, the Exodus 3 account goes on to say, tell them, this is God to Moses, tell them the o on has sent you. O on, not ego in me, but o on. I checked with uh, our he, other Hebrew scholar, uh, Bill Schlegel, by the way, on email, and he was nice enough to verify all this because I'm not a Hebraist. Uh, this o on appears again in, in the New Testament in the famous phrase in Revelation, to him who is, who was, who is to come. That's in Revelation uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, at least five times. So, the name, if you will, God's name is O'on in the Greek. It's not really ego in me. Ego in me simply means, it's used 15 times, by the way, 15, and I got the slide there. 15 times Jesus uses ego in me. And in all but one, most translations, like 
of the translations of those 15 times translated, I am he, or it is I, the Messiah. Okay? In all those times, except in one place, guess where it is not translated the way they usually translate it everywhere else. So in everywhere else, Jesus says something like, yes, I'm he, I am the Messiah, or yes, uh, I am he, I am Jesus, blah, blah, blah. John 8, 58 is the one where usually it appears as just I am, or even worse, some translators have all caps, I am, <laughs> That's, I am, I am shouting. Yes. Shouting. So isn't that an incredible tra I call it a translator bias question mark <laughs> because uh, that's amazing. <clears throat> I'll finish with the international critical commentary. That quote, Sarah, please. Um, I am the Christ, Matthew twenty four five. Uh, Mark thirteen six lacks the phrase the Christ, which is here a title, not a proper name. Matthew's edition eliminates the exegetical possibility of taking I am he, ego in me, in me, as a claim to the divine name. So that's a very interesting quote from a very well-known ICC, the International uh, Critical Commentary on Matthew 19, chapters 19 to 20. They're actually admitting what I just said. And, and it's even more uh, emphasized in this verse in Matthew 24, 5. Jesus says, Ego in me, O Christos. I am the Christ. Mm -hmm. And this commentator actually makes the point that it's sort of an additional thing Jesus does there, adding O Christos to take it away from this idea, says the commentary. And this guy, obviously, they're not biblical Unitarians, but they have to admit just a, a, a language fact, a fact of the language here. The exegetic exegetical possibility of taking ego in me as a claim to divine name that is just ridiculous I mean yeah so, so if translations were consistent they would have mark 13 6 many will come in my name saying I am and will caps. mislead many yes in caps not <laughs> I am he or I am the Messiah translators are look you have to be careful so right point that, that, that is the, using the divine passive uh, We've just learned all this stuff about the divine passive. Are you saying when, when Jesus says, I am? No, no, no. No, no. Uh, That's not, uh, no it's different. No. I, I, I just missed a little because I'm reading comments right. here. No, the, yeah, we kind of moved on to right. a different eye. Yeah. yeah, you're yeah. losing yeah. all because the comments are still about the previous. Right. No, I'll, 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 <laughs> yeah. I'll summarize it this way. Uh, so we looked at the divine passives a <clears throat> hundred plus times on Jesus' lips. So he used. Uh, by Jesus because he's not God, to put it simply terms. He's not God, so he's always talking about someone else who's God. He has a God, etc. It's also interesting in Colossians 1, because there now we have to uh, concede that there is a divine passive being used there for a reason, because all things, not just a new creation, the church or whatever tradition has been, but all things, says Paul in Colossians 1, including Genesis, were created by God. Uh, did it run out? So, and then I, just as an add-on, uh, they use the divine name time, uh, again and again, probably because of the Jewish fact that they don't uh, pronounce the name, the O'on. <laughs> and from now on, let's say it's O'on, not Ego Imi, by the way. Uh, and then that's just uh, to, to throw in the fact that if Jesus is really going around say, saying, the, not just saying the name, but appropriating it to himself, <laughs> claiming, hey, I, uh, yeah, I am Yahweh. I mean, it's just yeah. ridiculous. We have several, a whole bunch of questions here that sure. are arising from the passage. Yep, we got time. Uh, so, and, and maybe even Anthony might want to see <coughs> one of you. And it has, I'm not going to read every question, but when we say that with him in mind, from the creation of the world, with, with Jesus in mind, God created everything with him in mind. So they want to know, well, did, was it not that he had Adam in mind? And then somebody else is asking, well, is 
you know, was the need for a savior in the plan of God before sin even existed, before the universe was made. Mm. Um, mm. That means God knew that Adam would sin. Um, isn't that a highly deterministic creation model? Um, somebody else says it was probably inevitable that Adam would sin. I, I said that I thought God knew Adam would sin, the potential was right. there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then milk, milk notion says, shouldn't we distinguish between events such as the fall and created things as per the passage? So perhaps somebody can, if you'd like to straighten everybody out there, yeah, well, why there... would God be having Jesus in mind from before he yeah. created man to know well, if man was in or not? Not to straighten people out, because oh, my, my, my humble... Yeah, this question often comes up, right? Did, did God know it was going to go wrong? Uh, you know, we have the verse in Revelation, the lamb killed before the creation of the world. Mm -hmm. So where does that leave Adam? You know, what, what place does he have in, in all these? Uh, these are, you want to chip in, Anthony? Yeah, yeah the one you just quoted that is <coughs> fairly clear. In Revelation says that all, see, he was slain. So if the mm. lamb was slain before the foundation of the world, that would imply that he expected sin to come. Mm. Otherwise, did he throw it like a dice and didn't know which way he would turn? Probably not. Mm. So I would think that would have to be... Revelation 13, 8. 13, 8, yes. Do you want to read that? Yeah. 13, uh, 8, Revelation? Right. Well, my translation doesn't have it yeah. that way. This is like the ambiguity the, in the Greek, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. 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 All who dwell on the earth will worship mm -hmm. him, everyone whose name has not been written, in the book of, the li of life of the Lamb who was, has been slain before the foundation of the world. That helps us. Uh, ESV has... Um, uh, in the book of the Lamb who was slain. <laughs> yeah, it depends on which way you put the phrase. Uh, some of the translations have who was slain before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. Because we prefer that one. And are we throwing a divine passive in there? Was slain by God? By God? No. <laughs> no, I don't, well, I don't it's think so. Know to toss that in there or not. Yeah, it sounds, it's sounds uh, excellent. Yeah. Toss it in. The one on I am, the best one is John 4. The first occurrence of that I am is John 4. Talking to the lady. Yeah, the people who are says, talking about that. They're back on that. Who's, yeah. <laughs> that's clear. That the lady is speaking to, um, how does it go? <clears throat> he says, um, I am he. But the lady is saying, we've heard the Messiah is yeah, coming. Are you the, are you the one? Yeah. And he says, I'm the one. I'm the Messiah, the one speaking to you. In, in response to the, her remark. So it's the Messiah. It's, God cannot be born. I mean, it's just madness. God cannot die. The immortal God doesn't die. So putting it all uh, together. John 4, 26. Yeah, that one. Uh, and mm -hmm. yeah, all the verses there. So we'll wrap it up here. For, mm. for any other questions? <laughs> yeah, but about those questions really sort of. Like, like, Isn't that a highly deterministic creation model? Right, that God knew that mm -hmm. it was going to go. Uh, yeah. Some things are determined. Yeah. We, yeah. The kingdom is determined. The it's Messiah. Right <laughs> yeah, the, and in, God knew the nature that he was going to yeah. Yeah. create in the yeah. beings he was going to create. In, in rabbinic thought, by the way, in, in rabbinic tradition of the Old Testament into the second temple of the New Testament, uh, the rabbis taught that not just the Messiah was foreknown, mm -hmm. but many other things, yeah. the law was foreknown, mm -hmm. uh, the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So all, many things were foreknown, they taught, mm -hmm. by yeah. God. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are things, if, if you want to use that term, which I don't like, because it sounds too Calvinist to me, to deterministic. Yes, there are some things determined. The major events, yeah. The major things, the Messiah is obviously the, the mm -hmm. biggest. The law was already there, so also oh, that's another pointer mm -hmm. that if Torah was foreknown, then obviously we needed a Torah because we were going to sin mm -hmm. and so on. So, but uh, yeah, it's uh, look up your rabbinic uh, sources. So we'll mm -hmm. wrap it up there. Anthony is here, so yep. you want to wrap it up for us? It sounds we, good, yes. We could sing. You know what you're going to do today. Oh, can so. I say one more thing then? It rains. Yeah, please Yeah. He says in Colossians 1.16, the, the um, is that a preposition? Word? Yeah. Yeah. 